I'm telling you guys, she didn't fit the criteria because she's straight. I ain't trying to start no trouble over. I ain't trying to start no controversy, but I'm telling you, you got to fit the criteria. You got to be black and you got to be a librarian. And if you meet both of them categories, that gives you a better resume. <laughs> Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy, Chocolatey with the Sexy Body. Welcome to a new episode of Chocolatey Play. Look, we are back. Y'all know what it is. We're going to give one of my reactions to Caitlin Clark, man, and giving them a shout out as the season has come to an end. But this season, uh, this show has not come to an end. We are transitioning over into the football, guys, the NFL. So it's time to rep your city, rep your damn team, guys. But right after this, right after this, man, shout out to Caitlin Clark and the Fever going 2020, making it to the playoffs. Haven't been there since 2016, man. Y'all did great. Shout out to Caitlin Clark becoming a unanimous rookie of the year don't understand why there was a race to begin with they just kept trying to spin this narrative that she was number two at some point in time when she shouldn't have been when you hear them talk about how many records this woman has broken she broke like 62 records every time she stepped on a damn basketball court she was breaking another another record you want to talk about a damn double double record that somebody had i don't even want to say that because i ain't trying to start no mess you want to talk about a double double record caitlin clark had a damn double double record too as a point guard with the most assistant points as a guard she also had the most triple doubles as a rookie with two, because there ain't no other Ricky that got triple doubles. She also has the most games in a row with 25 points, five assists, five rebounds. That girl has like 62 records. And you mean to tell me that was a Ricky of the year race? Yo, she should have been in a race for MVP with all the shit that she has done. Let's be honest about this, guys. When you hear all the things that she has done, which is what everybody on ESPN, everybody's talking about this woman, all the records that she has broken now. They're all talking about this now, but they wasn't talking about it until the, the awards were in it. They wasn't talking about it today or had already said, okay, Asia's the outright winner for the MVP until Kaylee was the outright winner for the rookie of the year. They started naming all these things that she's been doing. What do you think she started doing those things? she been doing that shit since she got into the WNBA. She didn't just start scoring this much. She didn't just start getting this many assists. Her team was bad. Her team sucked. They was one in eight. So that was the narrative too. Remember that? Monica McNutt was like, I'm giving the rookie of the year who's whoever got the best impact on that team. And at that time, the sky had the best record. They didn't think the shit was going to happen, guys. They didn't think that they was going to turn this shit around. They thought that Kaylin was going to keep playing the way that she was going to play and they never was going to buy into playing through Kaylin, but they did. And you saw what happened. They turned it around and they made it to the damn playoffs. They could have went further if they would have just kept going through Kaylin. But Coach Sides had to be Coach Sides. Coach Sides is part of what that damn WNBA is, guys. And it's a league with an agenda. And that agenda was to already outright make Asia the face of the WNBA. Because he's a black woman. Yeah, I said it. You know, they said that Caitlin Clark fans is, is racist. But I'm a black man. And how can a black man be racist? Because if you ask them women in the WNBA, they'd be like, we can't be racist because we, we've been the ones who've been oppressed. So what's that make me then? I'm a black man. We've been oppressed, so I can't be racist. I'm a Caitlin Clark fan. And y'all try to spin a narrative, Renee Montgomery, trying to say that all these Caitlin Clark fans was racist. But I'm a black man. So how can I be racist? And on top of that shit... They, they was they, they were Trump supporters. So whenever Kaylin answered or responded to Taylor Swift's tweet, she was just responding to that shit. They just be like, go vote. Them was Taylor, them were Trump fans that start saying all them crazy things to Kaylin Clark. Them ain't no damn Kaylin Clark fans calling her racist, calling anybody racist. If anybody calling anybody racist, it's y'all ass and the WNBA is calling everybody racist. Who's using that damn word anymore? <laughs> Who's still using this shit? We know it's real, but it's just hate. You just hate her. You are a hater because you don't understand me. You don't like me because you don't understand why I am the way that I am. Why I, why I have what I have. Why I do what I do. I'm telling you, I've never seen a hater in my entire life doing better than the person that they hate on. And everybody in that damn league kept hating on this girl, Kaylin, when she didn't did all the things that she's done right now. Ain't nobody else can say that they've done the things that this woman has done as a rookie. None of them. Shell Swoop, she can't say shit. None of y'all can't say nothing about this woman. It's over. It's over. She has, look, she has been a threat. She has been a threat since before she even got into the damn NBA draft. She's been a threat to the WNBA. Why? Because she is a straight white woman who can actually play basketball. And they didn't want that to be the face of the WNBA. No. They didn't want a straight person, a white person, to be the, the face of the WNBA. They didn't want to. Asia. 
They want that to be the face of the WNBA. Because show me, show me another straight white woman in the WNBA that did great. Show me one. Show me who it is out there. Tell me who it is. Because I was like Sue Bird, but Sue Bird was, was, was married to Megan Rapino. I'm telling you guys, she didn't fit the criteria. Because she's straight. I ain't trying to start no trouble over. I ain't trying to start no controversy, but I'm telling you, you got to fit the criteria. You got to be black and you got to be a librarian. And if you meet both of them categories, that gives you a better resume. <laughs> Talk about it, Blast. Look, I'm cooking. I'm cooking and I'm, I'm cutting it down, man. I'm cutting this thing down. WNBA, you dropped the ball with this shit. You fail to change. You do not want to change. You want to continue to stay the same. You can't you want this league to be this rough and tough, bad girl league, beating the shit out of people. Go right on ahead and keep doing it. Go right ahead and keep doing it. Because the idea is to bring in new consumers. You have to bring in new consumers. You can't keep bringing the same type of demographic. They're not going to keep giving y'all money. And it shows. They brought in a whole entire diff different demographic coming through for Caitlin Clark and an increased revenue by 400%. Ticket sales are out the roof. Viewership. In, in stadium and at home, people are watching these games. They are engaged with it. They buying the product. They got the merchandise. They are spending their money on this program because of Caitlin Clark. And you didn't want to get behind her because she don't fit your criteria. She's not going to be able to push the agenda. And y'all know what it is. They know what it is. Renee Montgomery try to pull that bullshit, talk about these Caitlin Clark fans as racist because of them damn, she answering that tweet. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Ain't nobody racist. No. Nah. Y'all trying to fool us. Y'all trying to keep this damn narrative going because you want this to be a divide. You, you want it to be a divide to, to hide what's really going on. Y'all are hiding behind this racist shit. And it ain't that no more. You hear what I said? It's not that no more. Because a person like me shouldn't be able to engage with other people like that on that level if everybody or most of the people are still racist. It is what it is. Why about you try love to dispel some of that hate? Because that's all racism is anyway. It's some damn hate. People hate what they don't understand. How about you try to understand that person who hate everything and, and know this, that they've been programmed, they've been indoctrinated with this damn thought process since the beginning of the time. How old you think racism is? How old you think slavery is? That shit ain't that old. They was in slavery for over 400 years, but slavery has only been gone for about over 100 years, some shit like that, if that. So I'm just saying, do your homework, do your research, the stuff that they're trying to get us to not know. And you'll understand why Kaylin just went through what she went through and why they would call me an Uncle Tom, right? When they're using the wrong term anyway, it's a Sambo. You're trying to get the shit right. Look, that's my time. I got to go. I got to go. I want y'all to be able to watch this whole thing. I could not get behind Asia's style of play, even though she does play good. She does play good, man, but she just play like the most mediocre man. She play like Chris Bosh. I don't want to watch Chris Bosh play basketball. No, that's how Asia plays. She probably could hang with one of the, the sorriest men in an NBA, on the NBA roster, the man at the end of the bench. She probably could, but she ain't going to make no starting lineup, so she ain't going to play no damn NBA. So she played this WNBA where she's the king over there, or the queen. Let me sorry, I'm sorry, the queen. Queen Asia. Y'all got somebody coming on your, off y'all ass. And they, they only want to talk about her now after everything is over because they didn't want to show, show y'all that there was more of a comparison between Caitlyn and Asia and not Caitlyn and Angel. The fix was in, guys, and we all fell for it. It's a damn shame. God, look, that's my time. Please rock. Keep coming back rock with your boy. I know the season's over for WNBA, but we're switching over to football right now. And I got to give y'all my picks, but my pick for tonight is the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys, y'all cannot lose to the Giants. If y'all lose to the damn Giants tonight, y'all just might as well stay y'all ass wherever the hell y'all at. Don't come back home. Y'all going to have a rough-ass stretch after this. You got the Steelers coming up. Got the Atlanta Falcons who are playing really, really good right now. You guys got a hard-ass lineup coming after y'all play this game against the Giants tonight. So please don't mess this up. If y'all lose this game, guys, you guys are going to fall to being the worst in y'all division right now. And you already know how hard that division is over there with the Giants the, the, and the Redskins who playing like they playing right now. And the Eagles, don't make this hard on y'all self, Dallas. I'm picking y'all to win this thing tonight. But after this shit, hey, fool me once. Fool me twice, shit. And, and, and y'all got the 49ers in this stretch coming up too, even though the, the 49ers ain't playing that good. But still, they can turn it around like that. Can y'all? We're going to see. I'm picking Dallas tonight, guys. You guys, that's my time. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. 
hit that like button, that notification bell so you know when your boy drop videos and live streams, guys. I'm out this thing. I got a video tonight I'm doing with this boy, the Pope, live at 6 p.m. Y'all check that thing out. Until then, peace. Peace.